What we're going to look at today is a simple tutorial. This is a case that's been in our foundation training for quite some time. And so the first thing I want to do is uh, import a surface. And I'm going to open up this lockvalve.dbs. Now, DBS is kind of cheating in that it's a file that's already been named. So all the surfaces are already named, and it's an STL file that's with a little bit of extension for our uh, uh, file name. Or I'm sorry, for our boundary names. So I'm going to go ahead and import this DBS file. I'm going to import it as a part. And you'll notice in a DBS file, I have the uh, IDs in which I can import different uh, configurations uh, with one file. So I'm just going to do a 30 degree open case. And I want one part per cell type. And you'll see kind of what that means. Essentially, one part is going to be created per what would traditionally be called a boundary. And a units of meters, I'm fine with. And we'll open geometry and after import. So you'll see what I import here is a lock valve. And you see we have four different parts. Each part is made up of a singular surface. So if I wanted to break these out into even more surfaces, I could split the surface uh, by patches, by angles, anything like that. But for this particular example, I have my inlet, I have my outlet, I have my solid, and I have my valve. So all these components need to be used in my simulation. And I want to extract the internal volume using the surface wrapper. And then I want to send it through and run different simulations with different valve angle positions. So what I want to do is first open up the repair tool and let's look at why we need to uh, use the surface wrapper or some other type of method to clean up the surface. I'm going to go to repair and once I go into the repair I'm going to go ahead and start my surface diagnostics. So I don't care about quality or proximity right now because these are more referring to surface mesh operations. But what we see is I have a bunch of pierced faces. I have free edges at the perimeters of each of my inlet and outlet and essentially my valve runs through my casing. So there would be a lot of manual manipulation that we need to do to clean this up. So in this particular case, what I want to do is I want to use the surface wrapper to extract that internal volume. All right, so first thing I want to do is go ahead and let's send this to regions. So right now I have the parts. When I have a part, I can do operations. So I can uh, repair, I can move, I can uh, scale, I can change my parts all I'd like. And once I send the part to a region, I then have the region associated with the part. So I can change the part all I'd like, and the region will automatically adopt that new change. So let's select all of our parts, right-click, and assign parts to regions. And I want one region for all the parts because I want one singular air volume. And then I want one boundary per part surface. So I get my inlet, my outlet, and all those that I have. And I'll create regions and close. So what you see here is I have my one region, and I have my inlet, my outlet, and my solid and my valve. Great. So now I'm done with geometry for right this second. I've imported, and I didn't have to name necessarily, and I've organized it how I want, and I've sent it to regions. So now I move on to mesh. All right, so I'm going to create a new mesh continuum, and we're going to double-click models and open up the meshing options. So I do need to wrap this case. We saw that from the repair tool. I want to improve the triangulation of the wrap, so I need to run the remesher. And let's fill this with trim cells. We can always change this anytime down the road, but let's start off with trim cells. But near the wall, I need to model the boundary layer. So let's put in some prismatic cells as well. All right. So now that I've defined my meshing types, you can see here are the types under models. Now I have the options of how big and how small to make all the cells. So First question is, I have no idea what the diameter of this valve is. So let's grab our measure tool and let's kind of click a couple points here. So this valve is 12 meters across. Well, I don't know if that's really the right scale. So remember, I can always change my parts up at the top. So let's go and let's scale all of this. So we're going to do a uh, transform scale. And let's scale by 0.01 apply and close. I hit R on my screen keyboard to uh, refresh. So now when I measure it's going to be about 120 millimeters across which is a little bit more what I was looking for. Alright so now that I've scaled that I don't need to change my region at all. You see to go back into my reference values and let's pick a base size. Now a base size 
is generally referring to what size you want most of the cells. So let's start out by making a 15 millimeter base size. Uh, number of prism layers, I'm okay with two. Prism layer thickness, let's make that, let's say 20% of my base size, so about three millimeters thick. And then as we go down, uh, wrapper scale factor, I want this to be about 80%. And what wrapper scale factor is going to do is basically take 80% of my base size. So everything that it wraps will be 80% of 15 millimeters. And it'll scale everything uniformly with regards to the wrap. Great, so I've defined my reference values. That's the highest level setting. Now, if I needed to refine, let's say, a round of a circulation zone or anything like that, I could create a new volumetric control, but I'm not necessarily going to worry about that right now. So as we move down the tree, we get into the region settings. So let's go ahead and define my inlet. Uh, let's make that a uh, velocity inlet. And then my pressure outlet. We'll make it pressure surface. And those are the two surface settings I need to worry about. And what this will do is prevent prism layers from being created on the inlet and the pressure surface. All right, so now we look a little bit farther down. We have a couple wrapper settings that we need to look at. So the first one is contact prevention. Now, contact prevention allows me to say I don't want the valve to touch the casing until they're, let's say, a certain distance apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a little bit lazy. I'm going to just say I don't want anything to touch anything else until they're one millimeter apart. And that way I can refine the edges between the different boundaries. So once I've done this, I'm ready to wrap. Now the extra consideration that you always want to keep in mind is, is the wrapper going to do the right thing? By default, the wrapper will always be extracting the largest volume. And in my particular case, if I wrap the largest volume, it's actually going to be the casing of the valve. So what I want to do is change this to a seed point. And you'll notice down here below in mesh values, we now have a wrapper seed point. I can create a new seed point. Let's display the point tool. And I'm going to go ahead and lock it out. So you can see here that I'm right down the axis. So I'm going to lock out my Y and X directions here and here. So now all I need to do is move my seed point to somewhere just where I expect the fluid to be. You can see that right there. Great. So I'll create and close. And so now that I have my seed point, I'm ready to wrap. So let's go ahead and start out by saving. I'm just going to call this uh, lock one. We'll save. And I'm going to go ahead and hit surface mesh. All right, so the surface mesh is complete. So what we're looking at in this scene is the imported representation. I can always change the representation that I'm looking at based on what representations exist. So in this case, I started out with a geometry. When I sent it to regions, it created an initial surface. And then when it wrapped, it created a wrapped surface and finally a remesh surface. So Sarsteen Plus keeps all of these representations in memory. So if at any time you go change the geometry, it can rebuild all the other representations based on the new geometry. And you'll see after we build a volume mesh, we'll have that representation as well. So if I just change to my remesh representation, we'll be able to see the extracted surface. And I can toggle on my mesh just by toggling on using this circular mesh toggle. So this is my mesh surface. You can see here we've maintained all the edges and we have a nice surface mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and build up my volume mesh. So I'll simply click volume mesh. All right, so my volume mesh is complete. It's got 11,723 cells. Again, I'll right click in the white, volume mesh. So you can see we've got two prism layers on the wall. And this is the trim cell mesh. So if we look at the side by hitting S on our keyboard, uh, actually, let's look at the front. Let's look down X so I can cut it, make a cut right down vertically here. So just click the F of X button, and then draw a line. And then I want to add this to the existing displayer, Geometry 1. Great. So I've created the plane section, but unfortunately I have something blocking it, and it's this surface right here. So I can just right click and hide. And so now you'll see I have my 
plane section that I have right here. So I can also right click on the plane section and isolate it so I'm only showing that particular part. So this is our volume mesh. It's very coarse but a good representation of what we need to do. Alright, so now that we have our volume mesh created, we can move on to the physics section. So I want to select models and you'll notice when you create a volume mesh it'll automatically create a new physics continuum. If it does not have one, you can always right click on Continua, do a new physics. All right, so I want to do a steady state. Let's do a gas. We'll do segregated flow. And we'll keep this low speed constant density. And we'll do turbulent K epsilon. Now, all of these extra models are things you can turn on. So if you want to turn on temperature, if you want to turn on electromagnetism, Boussinex buoyancy, anything that you want to add into your simulation, depending on your engineering needs, can be added here. And again, you can do any of that addition or changing any time during the simulation. Great, so I've defined my physics. So again, just like in mesh, we have models. You'll see what models are defined. And here you see what models we have. Then we also have reference values. So your reference pressure. So this, everything else inside of star CCM Plus will be gauged from this value. So if I have a zero pressure gauge outlet, that really means 101,325 absolute. So if you want to change your operating pressure, simply make this whatever value you'd like your operating pressure to be. The next question are initial conditions. In general, you want to give your initial conditions as a best guess to help the solution converge fastest. So what I want to do is I want to make most flow go in the z direction at say 2 meters a second. Because I know that I want my boundary condition to be at 2 meters a second. So this value, these values you put in right here, essentially are just going to be an initial guess that it uses at iteration 0. So, now I'm done with my physics. We can move down to the boundary conditions. So you'll see under region we have our boundary conditions. So this is my inlet surface and it's currently a velocity inlet. So I'll look down at my physics values, constant, and let's make this 2 meters a second to correlate with our initial condition. Great, so now we've created our boundary condition, we've created our physics, we've created our mesh, we had our geometry imported. So we are now ready to go. Again, I'm going to save simulation. And now we'll proceed to run the simulation. All right, so now that this is running, let's take a look at what's happening with the solver. So I'm going to create a new scalar scene. And I want to look at that plane section that I created, so I'll simply drag it into my scene. And let's look at velocity. So you'll see the solution is changing a little bit as we run. So we're out at uh, 120 iterations here. And we've got a few changes in our simulation, but it's generally converged, I would say. So we've now imported, meshed, and run a simulation within Star CCM Plus. In the next tutorial, let's see more details on expanding your post-processing, reporting values, and improved increased meshing capabilities. Thank you.